Hello and welcome to the Coach Me Vancouver podcast. My name is Nadine Stille, founder of Coach Me Vancouver, and super happy you've joined us for today's episode with certified life, career, and executive coach, Lux Cuddy. Lex is an empathetic coach who gives her coaches the time and permission to talk, not about others, but about themselves, to discover answers to questions like, what is it that's holding you back? What do you need to move forward? And how can you do that? Lex wants her coaches to be seen, heard, and understood, to feel the courage to break down barriers and to be empowered to move forward and realize their potential. It's all about having real conversations for Lex. And with this in mind, this week's podcast episode is all about, are you investing your energy in the right relationships? We learn about taking charge of relationships that may no longer work for us and what role our own mindset plays in this. Lux introduces us to the community wheel to assess relationships and talks us through several ways to evaluate if we are indeed investing our energy in the right relationships. May this be with colleagues, friends, family, peers, etc. We also find out what to do when we establish that someone is toxic or no longer worth the time and effort of a relationship and what to do when we want to invest in building closer relationships. Make sure you check out the show notes to download your own template of the community wheel. All client stories mentioned in this podcast have either been approved for use or been altered to not be identifiable. Hi, Lux. Hey, Nadine. How are you doing? I'm really, really well. Thank you for coming in today to chat with us about are you investing your energy in the right people or right relationships? Yes. How interesting. It is. It's a topic that's close to my heart. And I think everybody should know if they're spending the energy with the right relationships Mm -hmm. or in the right relationships. Yes. So what makes you so passionate about it? Well, why not? We have one life to live. Why are we going to spend our time with the wrong people? It's all about value. The people that we're spending time with, are they giving us something back? Are they empowering us? Are they giving us what we need to move on? Or are they just taking from us constantly? Mm -hmm. And if they're doing that, then why are they in our life? I've been through times in my life where I've been giving and giving and giving and not getting anything back. And then I've reevaluated and I've been like, no, I don't need to be here. I don't need to have them in my life. I need to move on and make room for other people who are going to give me something. Mm-hmm. It's all about opportunities. Mm-hmm. And, and balance. It's yes. like, it's not the depleting your energy levels. And it, like you said, it's the giving, 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 yeah. but it's the, um, Mutual benefits yes. in in those relationships. Yes. I I hear out. Is that yeah. correct? No, okay. totally, totally. Okay, cool. I bet there is like everyone who's uh, who's just tuned in might have one or two people coming up right away in their lives <laughs> where it's like, oh no, this is you know where where I'm at. And again, it can be. Mm, there are obviously situations in your life where it, you know, the other person may not be in a position to give back right mm-hmm. away where it where it can't be. So are we are we talking about that as well? Or is it more like a long term? Well, I mean, we're talking about your whole community that could be in your workplace, that could be your family circle, that could be your friend circle, it could be any aspect of your life. Mm-hmm. In the work circle in the workplace, you have your boss, so your leader and you have yourself, however, the workplace is changing. So you can now think think about it in terms of, okay, is my leader, is my boss, is my supervisor, are they giving me what I need to be successful in my career? Hmm. In your friend circle, I'm spending a lot of time with my friends, I'm spending a lot of energy and my time. What are they giving back to me? How do I feel when I leave from meeting with them? Mm -hmm. With your family, you don't get to choose your family, but you can choose how to spend your time and how much time you spend with them. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of evaluating all of that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. And there's loads of different nuances in there as well, right. I, I guess, right? So while we were preparing for this podcast, there were a lot of side topics that came up with it around maybe self-care mm -hmm. or your well-being, setting boundaries and, and self-leadership as right. well, right? So what does self-leadership have to do with that? And it kind of, it sounds a bit grand, but maybe you can explore that a bit. Sure. So we're all leaders in our life. We are all leaders of our own future, of our own path. Um, I'm very much about walking the talk and, and walking the right path, mm -hmm. the path that is right for ourselves. So in being the leader, you have your own storybook. We all have stories to tell. Are we writing the right story for ourselves that is going to lead us in the right direction? So we're, we are all leaders in our own life, whether that be in work and in the friend circle or in the personal uh, family circle. We have our own path to walk. We choose which path we want to walk. We walk our own talk. And when we're walking the talk, we are writing our own story. And when we're writing our story, it's up to us what we want in that story. Nobody should be telling us what we write in that story. Should be. <laughs> it should be. It should be. Yeah. So if you're having having to write a story that really doesn't align with your values, with what it is that you want out of your life, then why are you writing that story? You have to change your mindset even and be like, why am I doing this? Mm. When I was at Royal Roads and I was doing this course, one of my instructors kept saying, what the duck? <laughs> um, we're like, okay. what do you mean, what the duck? And it's just something that you say and it's very clean. But what the duck is just where you stop yourself in an instance and you question, like, what am I doing? What the duck? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you start questioning, like, why am I doing what I am doing? And that's where you take your personal leadership into your hand and you say, I can either continue doing this or I can start to evaluate all of my relationships or this particular relationship, if it's a relationship that's causing a problem. And you can determine if it's worth your while hmm. and if it's adding value hmm. to, to your life and hmm. if you want to continue it. Yeah, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of truth in there. And it's like, how often do we actually stop and take time to think and mm -hmm. be a bit more self-aware of, you know, not just trotting along and doing the same thing over and over and over, but actually questioning, hey, you what know, the duck? What the duck? <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun one. Wow, what the duck. You were you were talking earlier about writing your own your own story and coming up even like with your own truths and mm -hmm. uh, and beliefs along the way that you have maybe gathered right. over the years. Mm -hmm. And that can be quite Yeah, I, I guess that can hold you back as yeah. well in in completely like, like this morning I was watching The Crudes. Just an example, mm -hmm. a family of cave people. Mm -hmm. And when before the sun sets, what they do is they put themselves into a cave and they block themselves out and nobody is allowed to leave. And they've been doing that for forever. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the, the young girl in the show, she leaves the cave to go out and explore. Mm -hmm. But she's not ready to put up with the norm, what her dad has told her. So she's not willing to be a part of the same story over and over again. And what she explores, when she goes out and she explores, she she finds out what fire is. And she finds all these new things and finds out that the world really isn't a dangerous place after dark. It's fine. It is what you make it. So it really is stopping, evaluating, Reevaluating and taking a stance on this is my life, this is my story, I'm going to live it the way that I want mm -hmm. to live it and have the people in there that bring value to me and give me what I need. Mm -hmm. And have those, like, seek out those opportunities and totally. what's possible. Totally, right? totally. Wow, great. I know you're going to be telling us in a, in a bit about a practical coaching approach on how to actually see if you're investing your energy in the right type of people or relationships. But before we actually do that, could you set the scene of how and when we'll actually use that kind of coaching approach? Yeah. So I don't actually have a situation or a scene per se, but what I will suggest is if there is somebody in your life right now that you feel is depleting your energy and you don't look forward to meeting this person like you look in your calendar and you're like oh my god I have to meet I have to meet so and so like oh my god I could be doing this or I could be doing that mm -hmm. that should be a sign to you that why is this person in your life like if she is making if 
this person is making you feel this way. Why are they there? And why are you making the effort, the concerted effort, to go and meet them or spend time with them or do whatever it is? So this is the situation, that, the time that you would reflect and evaluate and see why are you giving that person mm -hmm. that time, your valuable time. Mm -hmm. So what would be a first step to shifting that mindset from maybe even a, a problem type of situation to more of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. One thing that I find really helpful is the community wheel. Mm -hmm. and the community wheel, for those who aren't familiar, is basically a set of circles, a set of three circles. You have circle A, circle B, circle C. And, and the reason it's a circle, or the reason I believe it's a circle, is that it's a wheel, it's all-encompassing, And it's constantly moving and evolving. Mm -hmm. So if it's round, it can keep moving and, and it can keep mm -hmm. evolving. So within circle A, this is where you will place those individuals that are closest to you. These people might be a life partner, a confidant, a parent, a sibling, a very close work colleague even. Um, you trust these individuals implicitly and you know that they are there for you at a drop of a hat or you are you know, you're there for them as well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a mutual relationship, you have mutual trust, and you mutual respect as well for one another. Then you have circle B, which is the second circle from the center. And this is where we have people that we care about, but we don't trust them 100% like we do um, the people in circle A. These people, they're fun to be with. You can let some steam off with them. And generally, they're great company, so you like spending time with mm -hmm. them. But do you trust that they'll be there as and when you need them? Probably not as much as those that are in circle A. Circle C is the outer circle. And this is where we... We have individuals where we don't know them that well, or we may know them, but they have a history of causing us an upset uh, more often than we like. And we can only take so much of them at any one time. Uh, we can't spend a whole day with them. Mm -hmm. Small um, measures. <laughs> small, small, small cups, mm -hmm. small cups of time with them. And they do very little to empower us to do our best. So those are the three circles. Circle A, the very trustworthy circle. Circle B, the fun circle. We like to spend time with them, let off some steam. Circle C, where they're in our life because maybe they have to be, but they don't have a very good history with us. Hmm. Um, And those circles are stacked from the center. There's not like separate next to each other circles. It's nope, kind of the nope. inner circle or inner... The inner center. circle, the middle circle, yeah. and the outer circle. Yeah. And then you have group D, which isn't a part of the circle. However, we have a group, so it's not called a circle. It's it's a group of people who are scattered outside the, the circles. And these... Group D includes individuals that may have once been a part of these circles, A, B, and C. However, they They've been taken out of the circle as they bring nothing of value to your relationship. You don't trust them, you do not wish to spend time with them, and they are toxic to your being. You feel better without them in your life, however, they still have to be a part of your life. And I like to say that sometimes it may be family, you can't choose who your family mm -hmm. are, but you see them at Christmas events or, you know, celebrations or not, um, but they're always there. You can never entirely get rid of them. Or they Maybe a work colleague mm -hmm. that you have to work with, but they're not they're not doing anything for you. Mm -hmm. So there's four different groups, three of them being in a circle, a circle of trust, if you like, in the community wheel. And then you have group D that is scattered outside of the circle. By compartmentalizing individuals into boxes, you're able to determine who is going to get the most of you, where you're going to get your energy levels filled up, and where the relationship is not going to be one-sided. And can people kind of shift from one circle to another? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is not an exercise that you're going to do once in your life. Mm. This is something that you're going to be reevaluating at different stages of your life. It could be that this community wheel is a visualization mm -hmm. and you've already visualized who's in which circle. It could be that you have like at the beginning of every year and um, people like to do things at the beginning of the mm -hmm. year. At the beginning of every year, you evaluate your circle and you see, okay, so one year's gone past, what has happened? What has this person 
done? How do I feel with this person? Da 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 da.、Mm-hmm. Or it could be something that you're constantly doing in your mind,、mm. and people, individuals, will move from circle A to circle B to circle C, group D to circle A,、mm-hmm. <laughs> just as our life shifts. People in our life shift as well. People come and go. The importance of people come and go. When we're young, our parents are very, or our guardians' parents are very important to us. As we become teenagers, we like to stay away from our parents, and whatever our parents tell us, we ignore. When we're in our twenties, again, we're all about the party life, and friends are huge. In our thirties, and I'm just generalizing、mm-hmm. here, but in our thirties, you know, we start to meet people who are more meaningful in our life. Um, we may start to settle down. We may start to get a more serious job, and start thinking about our career more. So those relationships again will shift. So、mm-hmm. our parents that weren't very important for the last twenty years are now an important part of our life. And it could be because we're having children, or we're going through certain aspects of our life. So people come and go,、mm-hmm. and where they are, where they sit in the circles or the groups, that shifts as well. Yeah, and so the the wheel, like you said. Can be used either as a kind of a sit down exercise、mm-hmm. where it's a bit more formal and very much of an awareness. I'm going to do this now. Versus maybe there's one person who comes up throughout. I don't know a few months down the line, and you're like, oh, you quickly just evaluate that in、yeah. your in your head. Yeah, where, where would this person fall within、yeah. that circle? Yeah, right. Okay. What are some coaching questions you would ask your clients? To see where someone would fall within、mm-hmm. within that wheel. Yeah, funnily you should ask that question. I am a coach. <laughs> 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 so, what I would normally ask is, or ask somebody to ask themselves, is how are these individuals contributing to your life? What kind of people do you want to surround yourselves with? What, if anything, would you change about your circle? Your current circle, the way you visualized it or written it down. What is the best thing about your community? Your community being your community wheel, all of your different circles and your group. And what does your ideal community wheel look like? And if it's not、mm. there, what are you going to do to change it to be、uh. what you want it to be? Wow! So that's where the opportunity lies. Yeah. Because if it's not what you want it to be, then how are you going to take the steps to make it what you want to be? Interesting. Yeah, totally.、Mm-hmm. I, it's getting that self awareness, but then also moving on. Okay, say why are there so many in Group D? Or、mm-hmm. I'm actually pretty cool with you know everyone being in Group B right now, right. or most people, right. right? But then also, I just, I keep keep thinking it's like it, there might not be that many people in Group. Say A, the very trusted people, but、mm-hmm. you spend a lot of time with them,、mm-hmm. so that might be also a. A, a good thing if it, if there's a few people, but there's a lot of time right、uh, involved with that, and if you're cool with it, and right, it's probably different from what everyone values. Well, everybody、right? everybody、yeah. varies. I mean, I have people in my group A that I'm from the UK, so they're from the UK、mm-hmm. as well, and I know that if the call came. At a drop of a hat, I would be there,、mm-hmm. and I knew that if I called them at a drop of a hat, they would be there for me. Do we talk on a weekly basis? Do we talk on a monthly basis? Absolutely not. But when we meet, we are tight, and we know that we are there for one another.、Um, and I have quite a few of them. I have a very close friend circles, but for somebody else, Group A looks very different. It's somebody that they have to speak to every day. It's somebody that empowers them every day. It's somebody who pushes them to their limits in a good way. Every day, and and that relationship is different.、Mm-hmm. So everybody is different, and it's what works for you.、Mm-hmm. Great!、Mm-hmm. Wow, that yeah, that puts it all a bit more in in perspective, and like, there's not one best way of no. having this. No, we、right. are all individuals, and everybody has their own way. Okay, so once you have that awareness, you've kind of done that exercise. You've asked yourself those questions, and you know, been been through all this. What is a a, a next step once you have that awareness? Hmm. So now you've put people visually or on paper. You've put them into circles without really not not putting too much thought into it. Just you know, you have your mindset, you have your thinking. Oh yes, I know this person sits in this circle. This person is this in this circle, etc., etc. But then it's really evaluating what you've put down. 
Did you just put a person in circle B because you think they're in circle B or did you really think about it? Did you really ask yourself the strong questions? And if you didn't, another tool that you can use is what I like to call the PL account, the profit and loss account. Mm. So generally we use that in life for monetary reasons. You know, businesses use that. We may use that for our own finances. Why can't we use that for our energy levels? Have a profit and loss account for our energy funds. Uh, We wake up in the morning and hopefully Hopefully we're all at 100% or not, you know, if we're feeling under the weather or whatever the case may be. But generally, we're all waking up at 100%. If you evaluate your day, what is taking your energy levels from 100% down to zero? And if you don't want to do that and, and don't want to look at your energy levels and see who is depleting your energy throughout the day, maybe focus on a person for that PL account during a week, during a month, and say, okay, you know, this person we met, this is what we did, this is how my energy levels were, and give it an amount, allocate an amount to it. So what did you get from them? What did they give to you? What is What value did you provide for them? What value did they provide to you? How much energy did you spend with them? And how much energy do you think they took from you? Not gave to you, but took from you. Mm -hmm. And if it's a minus, then what are you doing? Why are they in your circle B? So it really gives an extra level of why. Yeah. There's a lot of depth in it. There's a lot of depth. It's Mm -hmm. like, what the duck? What was I thinking? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, (laughs) exactly. So what type of questions would help someone to get that uh, type of mindset? It's like, is this is this worth it? Is it like return on investment comes to mind, which is another financial term, right? It's like yeah. how much do you put in and how much are you going to get back? How much are you getting out? Yeah, yeah no, for loss. sure. Yeah. So some of the questions that you can use to determine your PL account is what does tolerating, um, whatever that toleration looks like, what is that costing you? Are you running on a full tank in the morning? And how are you feeling in the evening? What drains your energy on a regular day? What are the two things that you're willing to stop today, tomorrow, at the end of the week, or this month? What takes up most of your time? Uh, What does the individual, if you're doing the PL account on an individual, what does that individual do to help you recharge your batteries? And that's where the value comes in. What is your biggest energy drain, either from that person or from a situation that you're dealing with daily? What do you do personally to bring your energy back? And another uh, question that I really like to ask is, can you name the five things that you're putting up with? Yeah, right. What brings you joy from the relationship? What brings you joy every day? We don't give ourselves the liberty to ask ourselves that question. So, you know, we're all human. We can, we we live, Mm -hmm. we live to enjoy. So what brings you joy from a situation or a relationship? If you did not have this person in your life, what would you miss, if anything? Oh my God, that's a toughie. (laughs) (laughs) But it's the tough questions that you have to ask yourself. Yes. And you have to stop and think. And we don't give ourselves that time to do that. And just Mm. one more. What do you think you need to change to take the power back that you may have lost over the way? Wow. Yeah, that's especially if there are people that are in the outer D group. And I don't know, there might be family of someone who's once been close to you and, you know, things like that. Then going through and saying, oh, what do we have to do? (laughs) It's questions that we don't want to be asked, but you don't have to have somebody else ask you those Mm -hmm. questions. You can sit down quietly and just take, give yourself the the time, give yourself the present of time, Mm -hmm. the gift of time to really stop in your tracks and think about and take a hold of your life and the relationships in your life because we Mm -hmm. have one life to live. True. And then that other question comes in, if you don't do it, what is it actually costing you? At what cost does this come Right for you? Right. Right. To either put up with it or just keep going. And what could you be doing with all that energy that you invest in something or someone that is 
depleting you of energy so much. What would you do with all that energy instead? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So again, there's the opportunity in there. And I mean, no one says that coaching is always easy. <laughs> <laughs> and that self-awareness and it's always just all the happy questions and you know you're gonna feel good yeah well, eventually you will through those but there's some toughies in there there is some toughies <laughs> and, and then and one thing to do if you're not going to ask yourselves questions and those were just a few of the, the mm -hmm. sample questions but if you're not going to ask yourself questions just stop have a look at yourself uh, you know look back at days when you come home from work How are you feeling when you come home from work? Are you just like completely drained and just want to sit in and, and veg in front of the TV? Why? Ask yourself why. Why are you feeling so drained that you have no more energy? Is it because of the work is just physically draining? And if your job is physically demanding, then absolutely. But if you're coming home and you're feeling drained and you just want to veg, then is it a relationship at work? that is causing you to be drained and you come home and you're like, okay, I just don't want anything else. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to speak to anybody. I just want the TV to to do what it does and I just want to veg. That's when you have to evaluate because there's why are you working if that's how you're feeling? If you're not getting anything out of your work, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. So ask yourself that question. Yeah, same, I guess, could be said after family get together. Oh, my gosh. Or, <laughs> or hanging out with, with friends or, you know, there's loads of different scenarios when you can do that. And maybe you're all of a sudden more energized once you're back home. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, you weren't actually feeling that way when you were with someone else um, yeah. earlier in during the day. So, yeah, a bit of self-reflection on the spot. Self-reflection is very healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, great. To get that mind mindset shift in, we've as a quick recap, we said kind of to go through that wheel and, and put people in into that community wheel mm -hmm. and then get a bit of self awareness. Why are these people there? And you know, basically there's only two outcomes from having that self awareness. Either you wanna what, hang out with them more, say it's they're worth it, or not so much. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean the two scenarios are, like you said, You've either determined that this person is, you're giving this person more of a priority than they really need. They're in a higher circle than they need to be. And if someone is not worth your energy being spent on them, then take back the power. Let them know that it's a, that it is a one-sided relationship. And, and you're not getting back from it what you put in. That is empowerment. That is self-empowerment. Telling the person, okay, we're in a relationship. You know, I've reflected and I see that you are not providing me any value. Wow. Well, can I just take a moment? Wow. <laughs> really? And But then you'd need to be prepared, obviously, for the reaction that you're going to get well, and yeah. tell them what you'd actually want from them. So do you give them a chance, an opportunity to... Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And the likelihood is, like, I think about 75%, the likelihood is this person is unaware that you are feeling this way. And this person, this individual will have two choices. They can either be like, well, it is what it is and walk away, which is great for you because now you have time and energy to do things for yourself, mm -hmm. to make new friends, to, you know, put that energy where it is more valued. Or the individual will be like, oh my gosh, I did not realize. Let's work on this because I feel that you bring value to my relationship, to our relationship, mm -hmm. and I don't want to lose that. So then they are now in the know and they can now work on being a better friend, a better family member, a better work colleague. Mm -hmm. If you don't tell somebody something, they don't know. Mm -hmm. So that the power The empowerment that you're giving yourself and the other person in telling them what you feel is huge. Mm. I can actually see how that would work even like if someone approached me with that or stopped talking with me or hang out with me or whatever. I would I would want to know mm -hmm. and I would have loved to have the opportunity maybe to clarify certain yeah. things or, hey, this is just a temporary thing because, I don't know, I'm currently going through this, but I haven't been outspoken enough about it or mm -hmm. whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm seeing it. I know it's tough. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, this isn't working for me right now. But at the same time, I would have, you know, I would appreciate the opportunity to right. 
to I don't, justify. I was like, yeah, actually, I've been the same and, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and you're on. not just walking away from a relationship. Mm-hmm. You're actually telling that individual, this is why I'm going to be walking away or this is why I'm going to remove myself slightly. Mm-hmm. It may not be entirely because you still enjoy their company, but it may be that you're not wanting to spend as much time as you normally would with them or willing to put all your energies that you were putting in before into that relationship mm-hmm. because you're not getting what you need back. Okay. So for you in your head, you could be, say, moving someone from circle B into circle C, or mm-hmm. would it be that they're still in circle B, but you the the time that you invest in someone or in something is is what actually changes. So yeah. they still stay in the in that circle, but yeah. you just allocate less time. Yeah. It's up okay. to you which circle they sit in. Mm-hmm. It's how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. What's changing is your mindset. You're not willing to put up with what you've put up with in the past. Mm-hmm. You're wanting to change your story. Mm-hmm. You're wanting to take the power back. You're wanting to look after yourself. You're yeah. wanting to empower yourself to be the person that you want to be. Mm. It's just a lot. Uh, again, it comes back to several as I wanted to say. It's like what you put in and what you get out of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it totally makes sense. Wow, thank you. <laughs> for it. So I was like, wow. Um, so that's for that's for people where you say, okay, this is you know, you give them the opportunity, mm-hmm. etc. So and so. What if it's someone where they can't give you something back right now because mm-hmm. they're going through a particular phase in their in their life or something's come up, etc. Do you have any recommendations there? Yeah. So what if there is someone and and they are worth it, but you just don't have the time Mm -hmm. to put in? Again, communicate. Uh, Communication is key because they may be feeling the way that you feel about other people. They may be feeling, oh, hang on a minute, so-and-so isn't spending or giving me any value right now. So explain to them, you know, have that communication, have that conversation. Hey, buddy. This is what's happening with me right now. I know I'm not giving my 100% to this relationship. I want to. I really value our relationship. But this is why I can't do or give you what you want right now. This is what's happening. And they will appreciate it. And they will give you the time and the space that you need to do what it is that you need to do. They will empower you. They will encourage you. They will do what you need them to do because you have communicated. You have let them know that they are important, but you just don't have the energy right now to spend on them Mm -hmm. because something else is more pressing. And if they're a good friend and they need to be in group A or group B or whichever group, but a circle, sorry, they will give you that time and space. And as I said, they will empower and encourage you and give you the support that you need. Mm -hmm. And there's the the open communication there. and open communication. And you can obviously pay that respect back at some mm-hmm. other time when, yeah. when this comes up. and Yeah, and okay. they will appreciate the fact that you trusted them enough to tell them what's going on. Yeah, there's a lot of vulnerability in there, Total right? Total vulnerability. And you're being authentic as well, which mm-hmm. is so important now mm-hmm. in, you know, in today's world to be authentic. Mm-hmm. If we have a good relationship, we need to keep that and we need to nurture it and we need to build on it. And we we can only build that by trusting and communicating. Yeah, totally. Okay, great. So if someone's worth it and you're looking at, you know, the wheel, yeah, I'm allocating enough time for these people, then... Happy yeah. days, I guess. Yeah. And it could be. I mean, we're not all we're not all bright stars and we're not all fabulous at what we do. We all make mistakes. It could be that somebody is giving themselves to you 110%. But you know that you, you know, you seriously know that you have no reason not to give them that 110% back. So again, communicate and say, hey, I know I'm not doing what I need to have done. I know that you've given me more than I've given you. I know, I acknowledge, let's move forward and and fix this because I appreciate and I value our relationship. So it's not the fact that, oh, you don't have the time and energy because you're dealing with something else, but it's recognizing that you haven't given your 110% to a relationship that you really do value, Mm -hmm. but you've just been lazy. I've done that. But again, communicate it and that person will appreciate it. It's building that trust and and being authentic. Mm. 
Okay. There's one thing that just came back to me right now from our earlier conversation when you said, hey, are you, you look at that wheel where you have people in there and just looking at it as a, as a whole, mm -hmm. are you, I think one of the questions you said, are you happy with how that looks mm -hmm. right now? The amount, say, the amount of people that are in each circle. Yeah. What if you're not happy with the amount of people that are, say, in group A or mm -hmm. in group B or there's something? How do you approach that? So what you would do is look at it. Why, what aspect of it are you not happy at? Is it the fact that you don't have numerous people in Circle A? Why do you need more people than five in Circle A? Mm -hmm. What is having more people going to bring you? What is it that you're missing out of Circle A that is going to bring you the value and the whatever it is that you need mm -hmm. for having more people in, in Circle A? Is Circle B big enough? Is there somebody from Circle B? B, that you can invest more time and energy in to move them into a circle A. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody in group D who's outside of the circle that you haven't spoken to? And why have you not spoken to them in such a long time? Is there a good reason for it? Is it worthwhile reevaluating that relationship? Mm -hmm. Is it worthwhile seeing and rekindling that relationship? whether that be a workplace or friends or, or family um, relationship, whatever it may be. But it's looking at the value and, and the why, asking yourself, why do I need this? Mm. Why am I needing this? Okay. It's, it's also connecting more to, I want to say, more the quality rather yeah. than the quantity. Yeah, it's all about quality. You can have hundreds of friends how many people are going to drop everything and come running to you mm. in your time of need i mean everybody can go on facebook and like and say happy birthday to you mm -hmm. it's great but how many of those people actually speak to you when you're ill actually approach you when they haven't heard from you in a while say hey how's it going are you okay you know how many people actually make the concerted effort mm. to reach out and not just be a uh, a Facebook like or a Facebook happy birthday, which yeah. is just already pre-written for you and you just have to press a button. <laughs> I mean, people make it easy. I mean, not people. Yeah, Social media makes yeah, it easy. True. We are a lazy population now. We have to make a concerted effort to build a relationship. Mm. And you do that by going old school. And like my grandma, <laughs> actually making the physical effort, whether that be by picking up the phone Sending a text message, that's making an effort. Saying, hey, bud, how's it going? Do you need anything? We haven't seen each other for a while. Do you want to meet up for a coffee? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? You don't even have to do anything. It's just asking that question. It's just recognizing that you are reaching out to somebody or somebody has reached out to mm. you. It's You're just that one little step. Yeah. You're thinking about them or they are still kind of front of mind mm -hmm. um, for you. And if you are missing that value in group A, then yeah, look around who who's there, who yeah. you might want to hang out a bit more with yeah. and explore. It doesn't necessarily have to like work out and say, yeah, this is definitely, you know, a group A type of person now, but there might be. Yeah. So but, just invest. But what's missing? Yeah. What's exactly. missing and why do you feel that that's missing and mm -hmm. who is going to bring that missing component to your back mm -hmm. into your life? Mm -hmm. Wow. There's a lot to think about. I know. Take, take a deep breath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I think I'm, I'm kind of nearly through with the questions. I'm just wondering, is there anything? We have this this um, questions in the back feature that we're going to do in a few mo moments, but is there anything else around the topic that you want to bring yeah. across? At the end of the day, our time and energy is important. It's important to us and it's important to those around us. And it's up to us to see if we want to keep walking in the steps that we've always walked or if we want to take a new path and walk in new steps and make a new story. Only we can determine that. Every problem issue is an opportunity for us to uh, reevaluate our lives and to see who is worthwhile having in our lives. It sounds selfish, but it's a really important exercise to carry out. And once we've done that, we can move forward and, and be like, okay, I know and I trust the people in my circle. And I know that I have a supportive group. I know that I can be empowered. And I know that somebody's going to be there for me. And you know also that you have somebody who's 
putting in as much energy into that relationship as you are putting into that relationship as well. And again, we only have so much time on this in this life. Do we not owe it to ourselves to ensure that we take care of ourselves and make ourselves our number one priority? I mean, we're always talking about, oh, it's New Year's, let's make a goal, let's do this, let's do that. But what about reevaluating and saying, what is important to us? It's not about losing weight, it's not about doing this, it's not about doing that. It's about making sure that we are valued as a person. It's about making sure that we are empowered and it's making sure that we have a support network. How do you do that? You look at your community wheel and you evaluate. You take out the toxic people and you bring in the people who are lifting you and, and bring in new value. And that is so very important in a day and age where everybody is just busy, busy, busy to take stock off our life and say, hey, I'm doing this for me. It's okay to be selfish and take time out to evaluate myself and my life and who I want in my life and who I want to write the story with yeah. and which path I want to walk. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. It's a lot of empowering self-care. Yeah. And yeah, you're you're selfish, but it's if you're not happy, no one, you know, people around you are not going to be happy either. No, no. So go for it and just do it. Absolutely. If you're not going to take care of yourself, who mm -hmm. else is? Yeah. Beautiful. And it's a mental state as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, thank you for sharing that. That's That was beautiful. I will definitely take this up. We'll also be looking into having that community wheel up or some sort of version so people can download it uh, from the show notes. Definitely. So we're going to work on this in the next little while to have that up. And it's easier for people then just to kind of go with it right away. Totally. It makes it easier, right? And we're going to go in with the questions in a bag. So for people who are tuning in for the first time right now, Welcome. Yay. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a tiny kind of gift bag with pieces of paper inside. And each one of these papers has a, a question on it that can either be a bit quirky or a deep coaching question. Lux can actually see them when she picks, uh, she, when she's going to pick like three of them. Well, I can't so, see a question, but I can see lots of paper. <laughs> lots of paper, yeah. So uh, maybe pick three right away oh, and then you okay. can read them out one by one and answer them as well. Okay. What is your superpower? Oh my, what is my superpower? Balancing, I guess. Balancing being a mum, working full time, being a coach, and giving myself time to do things that I love for me. I think that has become a superpower, is the, the balancing of time. As I'm getting older, I'm getting to learn more about self-care and, and saying, yes, I have a family, I have a job, but it's all about me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds great. I might come back to you <laughs> for a few tips sometime soon. <laughs> Yes. Great. Right, that's a good one to have. Good. <laughs> yeah. I don't wear a cape. Maybe an invisible one, but there you go. <laughs> you know, it's all in the mindset. <laughs> it, it is all in the mindset. Yes. It's all in the mindset. I actually saw uh, a post this morning by somebody, a superwoman, saying, if I can't, don't have pants to wear, then nobody else has pants to yes. wear either. And you see Captain America, Spider Man, all of those without pants. And it was quite hilarious. So if you can visualize yes. that, it's. Yeah. I know, I've seen that too. It's, it is really hilarious. Yeah. So next question. Describe yourself in three words. Hmm. I would say thoughtful. I like to think I'm thoughtful. I've been told I smile a lot. That's true. So true. Also the thoughtful, but the, the smiling is... What else? I like to empower. I like to think that I empower people, give them the tools to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thoughtful, a smiler, and empowering. Great. Next one, tea, coffee, or hot chocolate. Difficult. Depends on the day. <laughs> Depends on the situation. <laughs> I am from England. I do have to say it's tea. Mm -hmm. Tea, hands down. <laughs> okay. How do you take your tea? I like traditional tea, orange pico tea, as you call it here in Canada, mm -hmm. with two milks. Two milks. Yes. Okay. None sure. of this no sugar. herbal stuff. It's It's <laughs> got to be proper orange pico tea with milk. Okay. Um, with sugar? 
No sugar. I gave up sugar a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'll just have the biscuits. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on the cookies, with you on the biscuits. Um, what type of cookies? Because that's a very particular oh, question, especially for oh, UK folks as well, right? Yes, it's got to be shortbread. Shortbread. Oh, yes. I've just been through a box. <laughs> Over Christmas. <laughs> the best shortbread I have ever had in my life is from the Orkney Islands. The Orkney Islands, for mm -hmm. anybody who doesn't know, are these set of islands off the north of Scotland. Very small. You can't see them on the map, but somebody brought them back once from there, their grandparents or whomever lived there. And they are the best shortbread. I can taste them right now. And this was like 30 years ago. I can taste them right now. Wow. They are amazing. Orkney Island yes. shortbread. Yes. And uh, But then the Walker's shortbread you? will do as well. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. Give it to me. Okay, great. Well, this has been beautiful and fun and well, we both have a huge smile on our faces now. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, for coming in and sharing your expertise and insights with us. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Lex. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Nadine. Take care. Take care. Bye. bye, -bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is it for the second season of the Coach Me Vancouver podcast. It's been wonderful knowing you've tuned in to take your life and career to the next level. Stay tuned while we're planning our next season. Until next time, stay curious. <laughs>